hello everyone. Today I'm going to be talking about the battleship Captain builds ever since the Commander rework. Now before I get into my specific builds that I like on different ships, I will start by taking a brief overview of the Captain skills and generally what they're used for because obviously I'm not going to go through every single battleship in the game because there's, there's probably more than a hundred of them, but I will basically mention in what uh, what are what these are used for so you don't have to ask in comments. Hey, what if I play this ship? You can just basically look through this introduction part and make your own deductions or you can just compare it to some other ship that I will be mentioning and, and basically copy that The first row of new perks. We still have expert loader extremely good on uh, the basically any ships that tend to use a lot of AP and HE either because something like a thunder because it has such such strong HE or just because you can have improved versions of it like on a Montana which allows you to blap DDs or just angled ships like in a Borgonia. So Gunfeeder is still an excellent perk. Uh, Pirate Technician, very little value. Generally this is only for very niche secondary builds where you want to increase the secondary fire chance a bit. The Consumable Specialist is quite eh. Mostly because the most important thing that it really provides is main battery reload booster. Everything else is basically useless, which means that the only ones that really get any benefit from this one is the French battleships. Um, emergency repair is kind of a worst jack of all trades. If you want to go for super tank builds, for example, in the Soviet battleships that tend to really like having an even faster reload on this and even more tankiness, then uh, potentially this one. Incoming fire alert, still not worth it really on a battleship. And preventive maintenance can be quite useful on especially French or Royal Navy battleships that tend to suffer with their turrets being knocked out. In the second row, Grease the Gears, Expert Marksman, still a cornerstone of many battleship builds because, well, having faster turrets is pretty damn important. IFHE, no, ever since the nerf, honestly, no, you don't really want it. Even maybe on some super, super specific German battleship builds where you want to cross some thresholds, um, something like Pommer and IFHE build or something, or maybe one versus one builds, but ultimately IFHE, even with two points, it's a pretty hard sell for a battleship. Consumable enhancements, once again, very much for the French, whereas you, you would like to have this on something like a German ship that has hydro or potentially on a Missouri for to increase the, increase the radar duration. It's hard to fit them into the builds because especially the German battleships, they need, they need secondaries and they need tankiness and survivability and it's really hard to have two extra points to spare for this. So uh, if, you, if I'm using this, it's mostly on a French battleship to increase the duration of the speed boost. Vigilance is still basically garbage. Even at two points, it's really hard to fit into any builds. Priority target is still very good and I still use it on multiple builds because it gives you so much information. A gunner? No, uh, I don't think there's a single build that I use this on. Simply not worth it. And on the third row, we have super heavy AP shells, which is a complete garbage skill and should absolutely be avoided. 5% AP damage is not worth the terrible trade off of 30% longer fires. You gotta consider that the standard fire duration on a battleship is 60 seconds, <laughs> and 30% on top of that is 18 seconds of extra fires. You really, really do not want to be running the skill. It is terrible. Long range secondary battery shells, aka 20% secondary range. This fits some builds. There are some builds that use this. Um, for, for example, German secondary builds like having it, even with the new, new improved, uh, man, uh, or sorry, not improved, the new nerfed uh, manual secondaries. Having that extra range can be useful. Alternatively, the likes of Georgia, Massachusetts, Ohio, ships that don't really deal that much damage with their secondaries but with their main guns, like picking this up because it synergizes so well with close quarters combat, which gives you 10% faster reload if an enemy is within your secondary range. So obviously you want to increase your secondary range so you can make this ability proc more often and get that 10% reload. On the other hand, AR is by far still one of the best perks in the game and of the third row it is by far the best perk you can pick up for basically any battleship in the game. It improves your secondary, your AA, your main battery reload time and when you lose health which is something that's kind of should be almost 
uh, inevitable in a battleship. So this is always, in pretty much every single build, a standard default fantastic perk to pick up. There is never a point where you pick up Adrenaline Rush and you're going to regret it. It's always going to be a great perk for every single build. Basics, it is, it is not a bad perk. Um, generally, I tend to not value it that highly, but I mean, it does give you um, the flooding reduction and it does give you the fire reduction. I mentioned the flooding reduction because the EDs have gotten a new skill that gives them a fair bit of extra flooding and carriers tend to be a bit more happy with the torpedoes because they got a new skill that reduces your torpedo protection, so they tend to go, go quite ham with that. So basics of survivability might even be a bit better than it used to be in the past. But it's of of all the perks in this tier, it's probably probably the second best. If you're not if you're not running secondaries, then it's absolutely the second best. Enhanced anti torpedo protection? No, you really don't want to build waste captain perks on a torpedo belt. It's it's simply not worth it. And expert AA marksman? Absolutely not. It is simply not worth the cost. You can't basically you can't fit it into skills. On the fourth row, we have what is basically the new meta defining skill this skill has turned around the way the game is fundamentally played and that is dead eye what it does is it increases the firing accuracy of the main battery if there are no visible hostile ships within the ship's standard detectability radius it's important to note that the standard detectability radius is what your concealment is in port so if you spec for example concealment expert your standard detectability radius goes down, which means you can go closer to the enemy while still benefiting from Deadeye. So obviously Deadeye synergizes extremely well with Concealment Expert. So the same way, if you build Long Range Secondary, you want to build either one of the secondary skills. If you build Deadeye, you also want to build Concealment Expert. It makes sense because you get a bigger benefit out of the skill. So this synergizes extremely well. Um, I mentioned improved secondary, it's nerfed, well, the dispersion is worse, but you can shoot on both sides. It's a pretty poor trade-off, because most of the time you want your secondaries hitting that target that you're focusing, that's kind of when you built for it. On the other hand, close quarters combat does fit some um, ships that benefit from the main battery. And then we have emergency repair expert. You might notice that superintendent is gone. This is kind of the new superintendent. It's at four points. There are some ships, some builds that benefit from this. Generally ships that want to push in, generally ships that try to tank, try to basically take it to the enemy. Um, most of the time, if you're building Dead Eye, you're probably not building this. There are exceptions, but Honestly, generally no, because you, must, you want to go for fire prevention expert instead. Fire prevention expert is, of course, probably when in terms of pure tankiness, it is the best skill you can pick in the entire battleship tree. Tired of being burned to death? What this does is reduces the two fires on your superstructure into one single fire. And because most of the enemy ships will be shooting your superstructure, most of the time, instead of being ablaze with two fires, you're going to be ablaze with one. Fire prevention was one of the best perks in the old system. It is still one of the best perks in this system. So a very standard build, uh, for example, something like a Yamata that has legendary module and can improve its dispersion and generally likes to play, already likes to play mid-range. Yamato isn't a brawling ship you don't want to push in because Turtuvers is terrible, the Citadel is huge. So a standard dead eye plus concealment plus fire prevention so you don't get farmed to death. And after this, there is some flexibility here. Personally, I really like going priority target. And with the final point, Honestly, you could probably go emergency repair on the Yamato because you don't really lose enough um, turrets to justify anything else. This is probably a bog. This is one of the most bog standard builds that you're going to see for basically every battleship in the game. There are exceptions either because secondaries or because your long range dispersion is just so poor or the difference between your con concealment and your range is so small. For example, Vladivostok struggles to make use of its of dead eye because long range dispersion is poor and range is poor so it, it can't really benefit from it. But this is a bog standard build. The only exception is generally on some ships instead of taking emergency you take preventive maintenance. This is probably the single most universal battleship build in the game that you can get right now that is gonna enhance the performance of basically every single battleship you have there is like there are even ships that generally aren't maybe perfectly suited for this that will still gain huge improvements i played this build on grosse corforce i played it on ohio i played it on the likes of borgonia like i played it on ships that you maybe normally might not play it on um, and it's been just perfectly fine. It is a overall solid build and this but this is the one I'm gonna recommend for the Yamato. This build I think is 
very, very solid. Now though, let's move on to the rest of the ships. I mentioned the Ohio, I might as well showcase the build on the Ohio. Note that in terms of modules, I am running the secondary battery mod 1. Um, you really want to run this on any ships where you want to utilize the secondaries because you do get the extra range, especially Americans that can either choose between faster turtles or main battery range. The secondary mod is very good on especially Ohio, Massachusetts, Georgia. Uh, I do run better dispersion on the main guns because ultimately we are trying to deal damage with our main guns. The fundamental build is as I mentioned, we start off, well, this is gun feeder. I wouldn't say it's a must, but I think gun feeder is excellent, especially if, because the Americans have so many special captains that have improved the expert loader. Uh, the John, John Doe and the other Doe and William Halsey, all of them have improved gun feeder, which means that instead of sw you switch ammunition type extremely quickly, which means it's very convenient to switch between them. It also means that, of course, you got the improved turtivers, which is the logical follow-up you follow it up with AR as I mentioned it is really one of the best skills that you can pick up here fire prevention to gain that resistance against the fires and after that it's your choice this is the classic 10 point build after this you can decide do you want to start building damage or do you want to start building tankiness you can follow it up by building emergency repair and just go for more and then maybe follow it up with concealment expert just a full tank build or alternatively you can even build uh, after you get AR you can build concealment uh, or fire prevention concealment and dead eye just to get that absurd long-range performance because Ohio's AP guns are very very good however if you're bored of everyone else sitting in the back kind of sniping way too far back then you can use the, the new skill you build long-range secondary battery shells and then you build the close quarter combat ability. Actually, you should you probably want to build close quarter, quarter combat first, and then you build the additional secondary range. The additional heal, the tankiness from the build synergizes extremely well with the improved secondary range, which means that you have that 11.3 km secondary range. And within that range, you also get a 10% buff to your main battery reload. Add in things like AR, giving you even faster reload and potentially proccing the ability Implacable from uh, William Halsey, which gives you even faster reload. There's a lot of ways that you can get some completely absurd reloads on your main guns. And of course, the tankiness kind of allows you to survive while making the push happen. Kind of harder to pull off than it was in the past, these kind of pushing builds, because there's so many long range snipers, but it also has um, a tendency to win games because people deal very, very poorly with pushing ships in the current meta. So, this would be my Ohio recommended build. Once again, if you don't like the brawling thing, if you don't like the pushing in thing, you just go to the standard Dead Eye build that I showed at the start. It works on basically every single ship. Don't worry about it, it works just fine. Moving on with the Americans on the Montana. Well, Montana already has really good gun performance, uh, basically. So you, once again, you have a choice. Obviously, you don't want to build secondaries like you did on the Ohio. There is basically no point. The build starts the same, which is, once again, we start with gun feeder, we start with grease the gears, we follow it up with adrenaline rush, and we build fire prevention. This is the staple of basically every battleship build out there. It is a solid 10-point start that gives you better gun perform, better... Re ammo switching, better turret performance, increased damage and tankiness. Great start. At this point, you once again have a lot of options. You can go the standard Deadeye build, which means concealment into Deadeye. Or alternatively, if you do want to utilize, but Montana has really the issue that the shell travel time is extremely slow and it doesn't exactly have the best pen, especially in the current meta with all these higher caliber and harder penning ships being added. So, <sighs> Trying to snipe with the Montana, I just hasn't felt quite as effective as sniping in, in basically any of the other ships. It just feels rather ineffective. So you can also opt to just go for a tanker build. Remember that the Montana does have improved heal. It does have basically a super heal, heal compared to everyone else. So building emergency repair enhances this even further. And I do want to highlight this, that if you are running this one and you are also running the flag, the increased healing flag on the Montana, you actually get a pretty nice 30.8 second duration on that repair party. That's half over half a minute of pure healing. So Montana can get quite 
tanky, provided you manage to disengage and actually use all the heals. Because of course, unlike the Ohio, you don't have a fast reloading heal. But the healing capacity is very, very strong. So there is the possibility of building, well, in this case, the more tanky build. And once again, you have three points to spend. Personally, uh, you there's multiple ways you can build tankiness. Obviously, if you're going to go for the tank build, you want to further enhance the tank build. You can either go for the priority target, followed by either faster damage con or heal, or you can build preventive maintenance. I'm not really sure if the Montana loses turrets that much, so that might probably be a waste. I think this would be a good option, especially since you lack hydro and priority target does give you some information if there's a DD around who's trying to torp you or if cruisers are torping you and so forth. Alternatively, you can just skip them both and go for the much easier to use which is just basics of survivability which enhances your tankiness even further these are all at this point i find it to be your choice in what kind of tanking build you have to go but there's really not that many choices there's really not that many good options remaining uh, note that this build can probably be used on the majority of the battleships provided you don't want to go for the dead eye meta just like the other the dead eye build can be used on most battleships this one can also be used on most us battleships it's a very very standard battleship build and personally i do like priority target significantly more so i would probably go for something like this if i was attempting to play any sort of aggression in the Montana. In the Vermont, however, I honestly don't find it to be much of a discussion. Um, you, I build, once again, auxiliary armaments to keep secondary areas and, more importantly, AA alive, uh, because you do have defensive AA and faster turret traverse to make up for the somewhat sluggish turrets. And at this point, well, I'm running rudder shift, but you can basically, at this point, you can probably also go damage control. Even propulsion is okay. I just run this because I find it to be so damn clumsy otherwise. Captain build wise though, on the Halsey, I tend to go for the Dead Eye build. The guns hit, like I mentioned in the past, Vermont has ex an extremely squishy hull. It's actually much more vulnerable than it appears. It, the, the thing just gets farmed so easily and with all the Conquerors and Thunders sitting in the back, you will burn like a bonfire and struggle to disengage. So. Expert loader is actually pretty good. Uh, once again, you can absolutely make use of it. Or, but you got to remember that on 457 millimeter guns, um, you tend to have so much AP alpha that it doesn't matter if you're shooting AP or HA at the DD. In this case, you do you do 16,000 AP damage, which means the single over pen is going to do 1.6. So. It's not the end of the world if you don't switch to HE before blapping a DD with this, because trust me, 12 guns hitting for 1.6k each is gonna ruin the day of any destroyer quite easily, and there's really not a whole lot of ships that can actually angle against you, which, which makes um, Expert Loader necessary. So, once again, there is a bit of a choice. Um, you can go for the additional tankiness. I don't think you actually lose turret traverse. Uh, so you don't lose turrets much in the Vermont either, so preventive is really not that recommended. So it's kind of your choice, do you like gun feeder or do you like emergency repair to give you a bit more survivability. Personally, I absolutely adore quick switching using Halsey, especially if you proc Halsey special. I, I adore quick switching to HE and blapping someone with the huge HE, but in terms of actual recommendation, emergency repair might probably be the better option here. Still, the build starts, once again, very same. We build into Grease Gears, regardless of the first choice, and then we build into AR, and then we build into Fire Prevention. Standard battleship build with very small potential variations. And at this point, of course, we do want to build for Deadeye, so uh, point number 14 goes into Concealment, point number 18 goes into Deadeye, and we're stuck with three points remaining. <laughs> and, well, at this point, I would potentially build this. Uh, alternatively, you can, of course, go just Basics. All are good options, but that, that would probably be my recommended Vermont build. You're probably noticing that there's quite similar builds, and that's because that's kind of the way it works. Um, Dead Eye is just so damn good that if your guns are good, you really want to utilize that ability. And then, of course, we have the Thunder, the Conquer, and I would say probably the Royal Navy battleships. They kind of tend to play the same. Thunder has a bit of an advantage of actually having quite strong AP. Um, oh, wow, I'm actually running this Thunder. Well, Thunder can get, get away, kind of get away with running auxiliary armaments, but I think I still would prefer 
main battery because it does to get knocked out sometimes. On the Conquer, obviously, you do want to be running turret survival because those are much more vulnerable. Uh, but generally speaking, it's pretty standard in terms you run aiming systems, you run concealment, you run reduction of fire, and you run faster reload. This is kind of universal to all Royal Navy battleships. Thunder, Conquer. If you have Cunningham, he's obviously the best option here because uh, he does have that ability um, equipment spoils which means that if you get two kills you get an extra consumable this is especially important on something like a conquer that has a super heal getting an additional super heal by getting two kills is filthy and of course um, the ability ruthless which gives you 10% faster reload if you get a wither aka if you deal fire damage makes Cunningham the by far the best captain on Royal Navy battleships obviously not necessary but he does have a lot of synergy with Royal Navy BBs build wise well, it probably looks pretty familiar at this point. Uh, I would say there's less flexibility on the Royal Navy BBs when it comes to the final point, and that is um, you really, really want to get preventive maintenance and you really, really want to get gun feeder. Because both HE and AP is so effective, um, or well, more importantly, the HE is so stupidly effective on the Royal Navy, but if someone does give you broadside or you're forced into some sort of close close range brawling situation, you do need your AP. So gun feeder is absolutely must have and i would say preventive maintenance is absolutely must have because uh the royal navy turrets well they tend to de be this well as you can see they're basically these flat box like shapes that tend to be knocked out extremely easily in comparison to well something like the montana's heavily angled turrets with much much thicker plating so conquer on conquer and thunder it's not really a discussion which first perk to go you do go for that preventive maintenance and then of course standard turret verse adrenaline rush can uh, well you can even go on or i would say on the royal navy you can actually go concealment expert before you go fire prevention and that's because they tend to have really really stupidly good concealment far better than anyone else so you can actually utilize that super stealth so you can kind of delay fire prevention but obviously if you have a 14 point captain then you start with the standard build which is concealment and fire prevention and then you build dead eye because these ships are mid to long range ships you don't want to be brawling in them you don't want to be pre well if you have to push in then you do push in keep in mind that when i say that you don't want to be brawling in the ships it doesn't mean that you you should be sitting on the very border as you see a lot of people who are playing dead eye right now they're basically sitting on the j line sniping now what you want to do is if you have a detectability of 12.3 kilometers ideally you want to be sitting at around 13 14 kilometers away so you're just close enough that you get the best possible dispersion while benefiting from the added dispersion of dead eye to make those volleys absolutely filthy accurate. And of course you, you, you keep better pen and you, there's faster shell velocity which makes it easier to actually land the volleys. There's not a whole lot of benefit to running all the way to the corner of the map that you see a lot of people do. So please don't bother with that. But the standard build is of course 10 points, 14 points, 18 points. I do really like priority target but i would probably say go pm before you go priority target so point number 19 into preventive and then uh 2021 20, into priority target because you really don't want to be losing the turrets and it does tend to happen quite often in the ships this build i would say probably can be ran on basically every royal navy battleship especially something like a king george is really filthy with this build and yeah it, it just benefits them all and then of course we have the black sheep of the family aka the german battleships i think the build i'm running right now is actually i think i was just running a dead eye build oh i was running a dead eye with secondary range and legendary um I, it honestly it kind of worked i felt like this is of course the very very standard build but then um i also added secondary range and the legendary which gave me this kind of hybrid Ohio type basically a worse a cheap worse Ohio uh, but in terms of effectiveness not not really that good um, here I'm surprised I'm actually not running hydro I think hydro is absolutely the better upgrade increased hydro duration of course to make use of your one great benefit of the German BBs um, I do like the secondary range even more than the main dispersion simply because well if you're gonna play a core force why are you not utilizing your secondaries tankiness um concealment and generally speaking you actually don't want to run the legendary because well one of Grosso Corfu's greatest weaknesses is range and in the current meta 
losing even more range against all those snipers, well, it's not a fun experience, so I do prefer just having a main battery reload. I think it makes you a more effective ship. You can run this setup and still run the classic Deadeye. There is nothing wrong with it, but honestly, do if you're playing Grosse Corps Force, you're probably not looking to snipe. I mean, I don't think someone is grinding up the German line to snipe. You're, what you're probably looking for is more of a brawling build. Uh, and if you do want to brawl, well, obviously, we don't need expert loader because we're hoping our secondaries will do most of the work in terms of damage dealing. Uh, well, this, I guess, would apply to Pomern as well and kind of Bismarck, Turpit, so forth. Basically, anyone where you're looking to use secondaries. So we go for Pirate Technician to improve our secondary fire chance. We go for faster turret traverse because, well, we really, really do need it. Once again, we build AR and we build fire prevention. This is always the start. This is This is the way. This is the way. You always start by building the survivability. After this point, there are some options. Um, we don't bother with concealment if our goal is to actually push in and brawl. We simply can't afford the points to that. We can, go, however, go for emergency repair to give ourselves even more tankiness. Alternatively, we can, we can start working on our secondary build, which means a long range. There are some options. Um, you can go for either one. If you're preferring to use your guns more, which obviously in a German battleship, keep in mind because they have such poor firing angles, it means giving a lot of broadside, then you go for close quarters combat. You do have some pretty impressive secondary range, 12.5. So basically, if you do build for close quarters combat, anytime you push in, there's probably going to be a ship within your secondary range, and that means you're going to have that 10% faster reload. It can give you some pretty nice reload numbers. On the other hand, however, if you are going for the more classic, basically letting your secondaries do the work, then I would probably recommend going for improved secondary battery and additional tankiness. And trust me, you're going to need that additional tankiness because Kurfurst isn't really as tanky as it used to be back in the day. Or you can just go for the full YOLO build, which is you, uh, you go for this. This is, this is the full YOLO. Um, you know you're going to die, but you're trying to do as much as damage before you go down. Probably wouldn't recommend it though, because this is a lot of points. This is a lot of points. This is 11 points out of 21 being invested into secondaries that aren't really that amazing anymore, especially after the secondary nerf. It is a potential though. In terms of recommendation, full YOLO, uh, but honestly, I would recommend to go for either one of these and then go for the additional tankers. That way you can actually potentially stay alive through whatever YOLO push you're going for. Let's see. Sure. We'll go for this one as a recommendation. Next up, we have the Republic. And I would say probably any French battleship that doesn't have uh, a reload booster. So not Jean Bart and not Borgonia, but generally just uh, French battleships. Note that you probably want to go for the turret survival on most of these. Republic, you can kind of get away with it because, well, the Republic has absolutely stupidly tanky turrets. <laughs> Basically, completely ridiculous armor. But on any of the lower ones, and I mean any of the lower tier ones, you absolutely have to run main armaments mod 1. If you're playing a Richelieu or Alsace or something without this, your turrets are going to break all the time. Improve your speed boost. Faster disper better, better dispersion, additional tankiness, concealment, and faster reload on the main guns. Honor, of course, is the best captain if you do have access to him, because uh, uh, the reason I'm uh, this is kind of a standard build that I've been running. So, uh, once again, preventive maintenance not that important if you don't find yourself losing your turrets. So you can absolutely switch it out for uh, emergency repair specialist in this build. It's once again the standard build. And I would say this works on, once again, really well on basically all French BBs, with the exception of the ones with the Reload Booster, because you can actually get some pretty nice consumable builds on those. But on, on the standard ones, this is pretty straightforward. Once again, you can trade Preventive and Priority for Basics on the Republic, but on the other French BBs, you kind of want to have Preventive Maintenance, because the turrets just break so damn often, so keeping them alive is generally worth the trade-off. Other than that, bog standard build, not really much to talk about. On the Borgoni and on the Jean Bart, you can do a bit of changing of the build. Uh, equipment wise, once again, very same setup, especially running main armaments mod 1 to keep your turrets alive, also applies to Jean Bart. 
But captain build wise, once again, well, we start with the same, of course, gun feeder. You switch a lot of ammo on Sean Barton and uh, Borgonia because your caliber is so small. And use Greece better turtles. AR, fire prevention. Standard, standard, bog standard build. At this point, you probably want to build concealment expert as well. And you do want to build Deadeye, which really benefits the Borgonia because it tends to become absolutely filthy accurate and Borgonia has benefited ex well it just does really well but this time when you have three points left well or there's still of course the option of just going preventive maintenance and priority target there's nothing wrong with it. you can run basically the same build on all of your french battleships and that is not the end of the world it's a perfectly good build however there is some options of actually using the new abilities should you want you can get the 10 percent engine boost time and your engine boost lasts about is it 230 ish seconds so you get 23 seconds extra engine boost, which is pretty significant. On the other hand, you can also build a consumable specialist, which gives you minus 10% on your main battery reload booster, which once again, I think it's about with the full build about 110, 115 seconds. So you shave off more than 10 seconds from that cooldown. So you can go for basically a fast and furious build by specking these two abilities on the Borgoni and the Sean Bard to get faster uh, utility. Of course, it does have the benefit of, well, it doesn't really have that much else benefit, sadly. The rest of the consumables are somewhat debatable. But if you do build for this, you do end up getting uh, 102 second cooldown on the main battery. And of course, your engine boost now lasts for 257, which is, well, actually more than four minutes. So it tends to give you a noticeable boost. But obviously, if you just have one captain and you're running it on both French BBs and on these premiums, um, there's not much point to doing this because the only ones who really get, get any sort of benefit out of this is the Chandbard and the Borgonia. And finally, of course, we have the Soviet battleships. Now, so I'll start with Slava because Slava is a bit of an oddball. It plays differently than all the other Soviet BBs where the rest of them really wants to push in. Slava doesn't really gain a whole lot of benefits from pushing in because, well, it doesn't have any air drag. So the pen on the ship is absolutely god tier regardless of range and the shell velocity is incredible. So there's not a whole lot of benefits there. It also lacks the classic Soviet damage con which combined with the thinner armor does make it more vulnerable. So Slava is a ship that unlike the rest of the Soviet battleships wants to play at mid range or long range even. I would say prefer mid range because it does have a pretty good armor profile. You can run once again the absolute bog standard build. Um, I don't see any reason really not to. There is some you can probably switch preventive maintenance for uh, emergency repair if you're because uh, you don't really tend to lose the turrets often on the Slava. They are so tanky, so you can easily get away with making trade-off. Other than that though, running Deadeye and running the better dispersion module on Slava has made it absolutely filthy. I think my second game in the Slava running running this build and just taking pot shots at everything, I already broke 300,000 damage. So <laughs> it is... Especially since everyone is playing naturally further back, Slava is really good at punishing all the snipers. The reason I cover Slava first is because, well, you can run a full tank build on it, but it's really accurate. You can potentially, you can trade off Dead Eye and you can go for the additional healing to give it more tankiness and so forth. But if you're playing Slava, you're probably not looking for that playstyle. The reason people pick up the Slava are the reason I play the Slava is kind of just to punch the gut in of all those snipers who have been farming me the previous game. So I, I like to build to Slava Strengths and Slava Strengths is absolutely the completely ridiculous guns and this standard build because Dead Eye is so stupidly powerful does work extremely well with it. Now though let's move on to the other Soviet battleships and with the other Soviet battleships it does actually get a bit different because well Kremlin, well, you can build actually, Krem even Kremlin can be built dead eye. I, I know it's kind of it's kind of stupid. You can actually run this very same, you can run this very same captain on the Kremlin. Uh, note that you do want to be running auxiliary mod, not main armaments mod on the Kremlin, because um, after all the nerfs to the AA survivability, especially with the Thunders and Conquerors in the game, you're going to find yourself without AA very, very quickly. Regardless of running this, but at least it mitigates it to some extent. Uh, but build-wise, you can run this build, don't get me wrong, I, I've actually tried 
Krem Kremlin with dead eyes is actually surprisingly stupid. But the fundamental issue really is that you don't have a whole lot of range. And what the Kremlin really does well, what the Kremlin is really filthy good at, is using that stupid armor, that stupid health, that torpedo belt, the fast reloading heals, uh, uh, fast reloading damage con, and of course Kuznetsov, which is, su if you have a Kuznetsov, it's the best captain on all Soviet BBs. So what the Kremlin is best at is pushing in. Just pushing in, and especially with everyone sniping back, everyone sitting super far back, a pushing Kremlin tends to be surprisingly powerful because people don't really know how to deal with it right now. People are just running away to keep you out of their dead eye range, and you basically get free real estate to just bully all the cruisers and delete them. So, what you actually want to do is the same way we built Slava for its natural advantage, which is um, better dispersion and better gun power, you can build Kremlin just pure tank. Now, once again, same thing as I mentioned in the Vermont and for the Ohio, you have such hard hitting AP that expert loader isn't actually necessary. And considering you do want to push in, we go full tank build, which is emergency, priority, once again, AR though. AR is god tier, fire prevention. We do want concealment, but I would recommend emergency repair first because you lack heals compared to everyone else. And you, this thing does also gives you an extra damage con, which is very, very important. So this is basically your first 14 points, the full tank build. Now you build concealment because you actually have a very, very good concealment in this. And there's once again, there's a bit of choice here, but honestly, if you already have priority and you already have this, you might as well go for the full Monty, which is just full, full tank build. And with this build, you have reduction to basically everything. Reduction to fire, how many fires you set on you. Reduction to the actual fire and flooding damage. You got the extra heal, you got the faster cooldown, you got the priority target. It is a bog standard tank build that gives you five damage cons and four heals. And it just makes you extremely, extremely durable. And this, I would say, works on pretty much all the Soviet battleships. Um, there might be some that where you need, I haven't actually played all of them in a while, there might be some that you might want to just skip PT and instead go for, um, actually, never mind, this doesn't work on all. I, I would say, you can run it on all, but I wouldn't actually say it runs on all, because there are a fair few of them where you probably want to switch from basics of survivability to expert loader and faster turret traverse. Some of them really, really need the turret traverse, and something like a Vladivostok, or even even a Sovetsky Soyuz would really enjoy having being able to switch to HE for potential DDs or just angled targets. So mm, Kremlin, it's great on the rest, still good, but I wouldn't say amazing. You you kind of do still want to go for greaser gears and gun feeder because they're just really good skills on the rest. Kremlin, however, of course has stupidly fast Turtverse and hard hitting AP, which means HE isn't as valuable and Turtverse isn't as valuable. So keep that in mind. That doesn't mean it's a poor build, uh, but you can just save basics as basically the last perk. You can just build this and then as you level up, you get this, or if you're playing the other ships, you get the other two. A pretty simple choice to make. Now, obviously I haven't covered all the ships, but I would assume that I've actually gone through all the tier 10 BBs. Uh, I don't know how I make sure I missed someone. I went to Shikshima Yamata. Ohio Slava. I've gone through all the tier 10s and the basic rule does apply to most of them. If you want to push in and you want to brawl, you build the tanking abilities, which I've highlighted. If you want to play the mid-range, the, the sniper build, then you build for dead eye. Now there are some options, uh, or there are some exceptions, of course, to this. Um, for example, Roma really, really benefits from this build. I don't know if you've tried it, but Roma is really fun with the new builds because Roma is a bit unique in the sense that Roma has really good concealment, but extremely poor gun performance. So what do we build? Well, we build standard build again. <laughs> you, you notice how, how much of a trend this is? And this build is great because um, you still have the tankiness and the concealment, but one of the great Roma's greatest weaknesses, which is the lack of dispersion, well, Deadeye helps with that, and suddenly Roma is a lot more accurate and generally more fun to play. This build is kind of universal in, in the sense either, well, either you run these two or you run basics. But I would say these skills here, these skills, exp, gun, expert loader, turret AR, 
fire prevention concealment did I these you can probably slap this on any battleship and you're gonna be just fine whatever you put the last three points in not the end of the world your build is probably just gonna be fine anyway that ended up pretty being pretty long so I think I'm gonna split follow split them up into different sections so this will be just the battleship uh, commentary just covering the BBs and the next up we'll do cruisers and destroyers as always I hope you guys enjoyed the talk and as always I do appreciate if you sub to the channel because obviously well that's kind of, that's kind of what keeps me keep, keeps me doing the vids is I know that people enjoy it so as always thank you for your support you guys are fantastic I'll see you guys next time